Hello and welcome to another Battlefield 3 gameplay analysis. Today we will be looking at the Thunder Run tank gameplay as played by executive producer Patrick Bach at EA's press conference at E3 2011. It is believed that this is the very first mission in Battlefield 3's single player campaign, allowing you to step into the shoes, or should we say assault boots, of Corporal Jonathan Jono Miller. 1st Marines Tank Battalion during a large-scale assault on the outskirts of Tehran, Iran, in the Kavir Desert on October 31st, 2014 at 0900 hours. The video starts with Miller contemplating a toy dinosaur sent to him by his son. Although dice say it is nothing more than a coincidence, the dinosaur is believed to be a reference to 4chan's V-Board's collective rant from 2009 when a representative from Activision asks the board what Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was lacking due to the game's low popularity in the PC community. As 4chan's Anonymous or Anons are known for trolling, they didn't give a serious answer and said that it's the lack of dinosaurs that make Modern Warfare 2 a bad game. While it's not exactly a critical aspect of gameplay, it is still worth mentioning. He finally puts away the toy and focuses on the oncoming battle at the insistence of his crewmate. Meanwhile, two F-A-18 jets fly overhead towards Tehran, and as he's looking around, we see the true scale of the armored assault that is about to hit the capital city. The armored units in question appear to be M1A2 Tusk Abrams tanks, as well as a few AAV-7 amphibious assault vehicles, best seen around the 1 minute 20 seconds mark, after the two Marine Corps AH-1Z Viper helicopters fly by. Note that the Abrams tanks are not equipped with the optional remote weapon station for the commander's MG. Instead, they just have one 50 caliber machine gun with a see-through shield. Around the 1 minute 32 seconds mark, we see 122 millimeter rockets fired by BM-21 grad launch vehicles from a PLR outpost. As soon as Anvil Actual sends reports of PLR armor, Miller takes control of the tank and we get a better look at the tank's HUD or heads-up display. On top, we have a compass showing the tanks are facing 315 degrees, meaning they are assaulting from southeast towards the northwest. This is geographically correct, as the Kavir Desert is southeast from Tehran. In the top left corner, the main cannon's elevation is shown in degrees. In the top right, we see a digital speedometer displaying the tank's speed in kilometers per hour. Mid-left, we see the status of the tank's weapons system and its two six-barreled smoke grenade launchers. At the bottom, we are displayed the status of the M256 120mm smoothbore main gun, RDY indicating it is ready to fire, and weight indicating it is not ready to fire. We also see an indicator allowing the operator to better see where the tank's turret is currently facing, in comparison with the tank's hull. Last but not least, in the middle we have the Abrams unique aiming reticle, as one would expect. When magnification is activated by clicking the right mouse button, there's an indicator on the right-hand side showing the current magnification. In our case, three times magnification. There's also a warning light that appears when the tank is taking damage. The indicator reading 60 Hz shows the screen refresh rate, but in-game, it serves no functional purpose whatsoever. The battle group then engages enemy armor that is closing in. The enemy tank's silhouettes aren't very clear, and it makes identification harder. But around the 3 minute 47 seconds mark, Miller fires at a tank, and then someone, possibly Miller himself, says, Boom! T-72 engaged and destroyed on the radio, giving us conclusive proof that the enemy tanks are T-72s, easy pickings for an M1 Abrams. It is unknown if they will also make an appearance in Battlefield 3's multiplayer. The player can switch to thermal imaging by pressing C on the keyboard. It is unknown as of now if thermal imaging will be present in multiplayer. It wouldn't be a surprise to have all this included in the multiplayer, as Battlefield 2's tanks had everything from smoke canisters to coaxial machine guns, whereas in Battlefield Bad Company 2, the player had to choose a vehicle specialization, allowing them to use one item, and one item only, like the coaxial machine gun, the smoke launchers, or magnification. After the enemy armor has been destroyed, the group continues the advance towards Tehran, until they are met by a barrage of artillery and are ordered to halt. Meanwhile, an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV operator, has eyes on the enemy outpost, hosting the BM-21s. 
He patches live feed over to Miller, who takes control of the drone and laser designates targets for friendly A-10 warthogs. However, they cause minimum damage and, according to Chatter, are at bingo fuel, meaning they have just enough fuel to make it safe back to base and have to egress, leaving the armored units to handle the rest. Thanks to thermal imaging, we can clearly see five BM-21s, four BMP-2s, several infantry units and trucks, as well as two SAM sites. After that, we see Frostbite 2's ant animation system hard at work, gifting the loader lifelike movement as he loads the 120mm gun, preparing for the charge on the PLR rocket batteries. Notice how he has Don't Panic written on his helmet. As soon as the armored unit starts the charge, the player is prompted to press the shift key to go full throttle. Again, it is unknown if this feature will be available in multiplayer straightforward, or if it will require a vehicle specialization, as in Bad Company 2. Soon after the advance started, Anvil 3-2 is hit and bursts into flames, and two crew members on fire quickly jump out of the tank and roll on the ground in an effort to put their uniforms out. During the charge, we can see that the tank's top speed is approximately 50 kilometers per hour off-road, as it is in real life. As the units move into the outpost, the player switches to a 7.62 millimeter M240 coaxial machine gun by pressing 2 on the keyboard. The 120 millimeter gun can be selected by pressing 1. The text lock can also be seen on the left side of the HUD, possibly indicating a missile lock. After Miller kills several infantry units, he engages a BMP-2. BMP stands for Boyevia Machina Picotti, literally infantry fighting vehicle. When you look at the BM-2's rear doors in real life and notice how thick they are, you might think, oh wow, thick armor to protect the infantry inside. Wrong. One critical flaw of this IFV is the fact that its rear doors hold fuel tanks, so a single hit to the back could blow up the whole thing. If BMP-2s will be present in BF-3's multiplayer, don't expect them to blow up from a single hit to the back, though. In multiplayer, balance has priority over authenticity. After the BMP is destroyed, Marines raid the compound, moving in through a breach in the earthen wall, also known as a burn. Miller then fires off a round into a BM-21, causing it to explode in a spectacular fashion initiating a chain reaction causing secondary damage, destroying the other launchers, an impressive display of fireworks by the Frostbite 2 game engine. After that, the tanks move out of the encampment, and as soon as Miller can see over the ridge, he is shocked by the image of Tehran's outskirts and flames, while B-1 Lancer supersonic strategic bombers fly above and enemy armor are hit by airburst ordnance. Just like Miller, it's impossible not to be shocked by such a landscape. A landscape which no other game can offer.